we can never be familiar with your presence we bow and we worship the king of kings the great I am the doer of all miracles the God who is mighty yet the God whom we call our father we bless you because you are here we thank you for your presence. Oh, we just worship you. We just adore you. There's none like you. Absolutely no one. Absolutely no one. Who can carry this majestic presence? Who else in heaven and on earth but you? So we bow before your throne tonight. We bless you. Of mercy and grace, thou art welcome. Is. Wherever you are, open your mouth and just exercise your spirit in prayer. Open your mouth, raise a worship, raise a prayer of incense. Just make sure you are not quiet. Let's honor him, let's honor his presence. Kido bobo na mahasambra telege. Say, oh, glorious God, we cry, say. 
come before him tonight. Oh, glorious God, say. Lay down every pride. Lay down everything for which you boast for in the natural. Lay before the King of Kings and worship. This is the protocol to his presence. We lay our crowns, say, we chant with violence. that has been asked for centuries for decades a question that is without an answer
towards worshiping. Just in case worship is strange for you, you can pray. But there is an aspect of worship that is audible. You just can't be quiet. When you behold the King of Kings, when you stand in awe of Him, there is so much to confess that you just cannot afford to be quiet. and the list is endless thank you that we serve a God that is not to be compared with the gods of men they are the words of men come on sing it like you mean sing it from the depth of your soul you as you see Sing it from the depths you of your soul. Reflect on what you sing. Truly, God, there is there no one. Is none like you. All other gods say, All We stand here tonight and we be the only God. You are the only God. There is none like you. There is none like you. Take it again. You are the only God. Say you are the only God. Sing it as you reflect. As you sing, reflect on the words. You are the only God. In heaven and the earth and under the earth. There is no one like you, Lord. There is none like you. You are the only God. You are the only God. There is none. There is none like you. You are the only God. Say. You are the only God. There is none like you. 
of the presence of the King of Kings that is here tonight. Be conscious of the Lord standing right next to you. There's something about His presence. There's something about the very presence of the living God and what it can do to the life of a man. Just lift your hands and soak in this atmosphere. Congregation, lift your voice and let's declare it. You are Jehovah. Just the mention of your name is so sweet to the sound of the earth. The very mentioning of your name. Your name, your name, your name, your name.
One more time, you are the most high. You are the most high. You are the most high God. We love to call your name. We love to scream your name. We love to worship your name. We love to shout your name. We love to dance in your name. We love to scream your name. Keep the progression. We love to call your name. You are the most. We love to call your name. We love to say your name. There is power in your name, sir. You are the most high. There is glory in your name. You are the most high. We love to call your name. You are the most high. You are the most high. Clap with your hands. We love to call your name. You are the most high. You are the These most are dimensions of worship. God. This is the spirit of worship. When it comes you over you and God begins to sing through you. Come on, sing. You are the most high. We love to call your name. Yeah. 
listen, sing, listen, listen. When you started playing that reggae beat, there was an old song that came to my mind. And we have to sing that song before we sit down. The Lord reigned, let the earth tremble. He reigned, let the earth tremble. with the Holy Ghost to scatter the service. Amen. There's nothing, there's nothing like the presence of God. There's nothing, nothing compares. Now listen. By certain actions you can tell whether a man or a woman is someone that dwells in the presence of God. Dwelling in the presence of God gives you the ability to become very, very much spontaneous to the leading of the Spirit, even when it doesn't make sense. Amen? Because we are all children before Him. He's our God. The Bible says we are the sheep of his pasture. Father, we bless you. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. What a marvelous God. What a marvelous God. He has done marvelous things for me. What a marvelous God. What a marvelous God. He's still doing marvelous things. I know somebody's asking a question in their mind. Why is he singing? Why does he keep singing? Especially the kind of songs. 
Listen. You know this song? Someone asked the question. Why do you see? When we lift our hands to Jesus, what do we really mean? Let's sing the chorus. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. His eyes are on the sparrow. That's the reason why. Cause you move mountain You cause walls to fall With your power You perform me And there is nothing That's impossible And we say to the challenge that is standing before you. Hey, with your power, perform miracles. Sit down, God bless you. Say you made it, you made a way. You made a way. Don't know how, but don't know how, but you did it. You know, when you are praying for a meeting and God doesn't talk to you, but he's aware that you are waiting on him, you just know that he wants to sneak up on you. Amen. Honestly, I was having a time with the Lord shortly before this meeting, but God would not just tell me what he would do. I prepared the studies I wanted us to do today. But somehow God will not talk. But you see, I don't get offended when God doesn't talk. Because God is Lord. He's King. Not the King of your village. He's King of the universe. Even the King in your village doesn't talk always. So it is not in the nature of kings to talk often. But I tell you one thing that God can do. God answers much. He answers the request of his people. He answers to the intentional acts of worship, sacrifice. He responds to the intentional acts of faith. It's always that he's waiting for us to do certain things and then he reacts in response to what we do. And worship is one of those ways that you can get the Lord to react positively. That's why we do what we do in this place. And I tell you, if you really want to befriend the Holy Spirit, you have to be a worshiper. Being a worshiper has nothing to do with whether you have a good voice or not. I believe it is the responsibility of every believer, genuine believer, that calls on the name of the Lord. 
to take up the reputation of being a worshiper the bible says that the father seeketh for many years we have been taught of a god who is all sufficient in himself of a god that sustains all and is sustained by none and so we were moved to believe that there is nothing you can give god that he needs but jesus told us in john chapter 4 that the father has a desire and his desire is not to see people gather and pray though when we pray the results are beneficial to us his desire is to seek worshipers that will worship him in spirit and in truth that you get to a point where you are so consumed in your time with him you get lost in your his presence and you forget yourself and then you become possessed by the lord himself it's at that point that the scripture zephaniah chapter 3 verse 17 is fulfilled that the lord begins to rejoice in you with singing <laughs> your secret place is truly deep when you get to that point often when god begins to rejoice in you he begins to sing the songs may not tally with the situations that you are going through the songs may not tally with the things happening around you but i sing because i'm happy i sing because i'm free his eyes are on the sparrows and that's the reason why I sing I sing because I'm happy I sing because I'm free where the Spirit of the Lord is there is freedom his eyes are on the sparrows and I know that he watches me Emmanuel Emmanuel hey, Your name is called Emmanuel Oh Emmanuel Emmanuel spirit and i let me give us a testimony i was not born a singer i was born in a family with five children god had blessed every one of us one way or the other with music but out of the five of us i was the only one that could not sing and there were times in my life where sometimes my younger sister would just tease me and say there's no need for you to sing But I want to share a secret with us why I'm able to sing even when I lose my voice before getting on stage. Some of you don't know that it's an anointing that makes me do what I do. Years ago, one time, because one of the things I love to do is spend time with God. I love to spend time with God in prayer, in worship. It's a hobby. I created my life around it. And one day, years ago, while I was worshipping in the presence of the Lord with that voice that many people said cannot sing the Holy Spirit whispered to me and here's what he told me he said since you love to always sing to me I will touch your voice so that you can sing my heart to the nations <laughs> yes that's how I do what I do happened years ago If you if you give your life i'm not talking about nominal religious christianity if you truly give your life to walk with god if you forget about the distractions of this world there are many distractions in life everything will look for your attention you have to know whom you are giving it to attention is a price that you pay 
it's not just a gift that you give that's why they say pay attention once you pay it you can't retrieve it back so if you truly give your life and your attention to walk with God to know him like the Bible spoke about Enoch that Enoch walked with God you know the Bible says in Genesis chapter 5 if you start reading from verse 1 and it gives us the genealogy the account of men from the time of Adam as at this time man had fallen and lost his place with God and was doomed to die but somehow because of the mercies of God or probably because of the things that Adam had experienced why he was still in the presence of God in Eden somehow they were able to enter into longevity despite the fact that this was now a civilization in sin and then the Bible will say Adam gave birth to this one and this one gave birth to this one and the story got exciting when it came to Enoch the Bible says and Jared begot Enoch and the story of Enoch began there in just two three verses the Bible says when he was 65 years he gave birth to Methuselah and the Bible says after that he walked with God for 300 years there's something I want to bring out of that and then we'll close one of the desires of certain people in this life among many things is to have children we believe God for many things we pray for many things we believe God to own houses to own properties to own cars most of our needs are material and then if you have gathered everything we begin to believe God for a family and for some people especially some ladies the moment God gives them children which is supposed to be the crown of all their expectations they no longer see the need to serve God for some people as soon as they get married that's all they reduce coming to church they see no reason why you should be zealous for God again because I mean what we should be seeking God for God has given to us because they think that you seek God for the things that he gives but you seek God because your existence is tied around seeking him and what comes from him by time so at this point Enoch would have just relaxed he has gotten a child he had everything there was no need after all the story had gotten to them of how God drove their forefathers from the garden but the Bible says after he begat Methuselah and Enoch walked with God not just for one year not just for two years so that you know he was not working with God because he needed something from God but he walked with God for 300 years will you seek God when he has given you everything when you have gotten everything that is in your mind now as you are looking at me you know those days when when we undergo fastings those days and then under the the strain of the fast you begin to feel hungry at that point anything can satisfy you on a normal day you will not eat kuli kuli but by just the sight of kuli kuli your appetite is wet you see the thing is not that you want to eat kuli kuli the issue is that you are hungry and at that point anything can satisfy you but the moment you eat that kuli kuli and your hunger has been dissipated that's when we truly know the distinction of your taste that's when we truly know what you are hungry for when God has given you everything that you need in your material existence that's when we know whether the confessions of your mouth were true the Bible says Enoch walked with God for 300 years and I don't know what happened within those 300 years but what we human beings will call an untimely death the Bible says he was not for God took him there was something about the bonding between Enoch and God and God realized that I can't keep this man here I have just too few of his kind on earth it's only when you begin to read 
the book of Jude and other letters that were written that you will see how that Enoch walked with God to a point where several things that were revealed in scripture thousands of years later came from his experience with God and friends that's what God seeks and desires from us that's what God wants from us God desires a people that will walk with him a people that will set out on an adventure a lifetime adventure to seek God he said in Jeremiah that you shall seek me and find me if you search with the whole of your heart meaning that if the search is not with the whole of your heart you can't see all of him and if I like the way he said it from verse 12 he said and you shall go chapter 29 verse 12 right he says and you shall go then you shall call upon me and you shall go and pray meaning that if you truly seek God that search will drive you to a place God is not discovered everywhere no wonder David said I was glad when they said let us go my motivation is to always enter into the presence of God because then the presence of God was a location but now the presence of God is a position he that dwelleth in the secret place that secret place is your heart it's not a church building it's not a room it's your heart he says then you shall call upon me and you shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you and you shall seek me and find me when you search for me with the whole of your heart can you take out time to search for God can you find out from him the details about your life when it comes to knowing the mind of God concerning our lives that's a very difficult situation we have too many lazy Christians that don't want to go the extra mile that don't want to pay the price and you see let me tell you the price you pay in seeking the will of God for your life and in seeking the place of God in your life that price you pay that extra mile you take is what distinguishes you out in a generation to enter into what I call rare kinds of graces not everything in God is a gift some things are treasures some things are reward he will give you he can watch you for 10 years just to see that the motive of your heart aligns with him that's how God is that's the reason why you cannot relegate God to a moment no I don't worship here or kneel down because we are in church you know this is how I do in my secret place everything you see me do here I do it in my secret place if you see me jump here I jump in my room <laughs> next week maybe I'll sing there was a song that came to me two weeks ago I was supposed to go on a retreat and then there were many people who wanted to see me I had so many engagements and I was in between what, what do I do do I step into the retreat shut down and forget about these people with their needs or do I attend to them as a loving shepherd and while I was standing there in between that the Holy Spirit began to sing a song in my ear I'll sing it for you next week and as soon as I heard that song I knew I just knew what to do I locked my door and I went inside off my phone and started singing the song and by the time I finished singing it I took my book and it was a complete song wrote it down so I'll sing it for you next week that's how you start retreat though. that's how you start a retreat so that you know that prayer is not allo just allocated to a time you will now understand why the apostle said pray without ceasing in other words there is a mode if you are truly prayerful if you are truly a worshipper if you are truly a man or a woman of his presence there is a mode you will be conformed to so that even when you are not in your room you are going about your day's job that mode has conformed you to a point where you are easily spontaneous you can easily begin to pray you can stop at any point and begin to worship that was what Ab that was Abraham's secret every time God appeared to him 
he didn't care where he was the bible will say he built an altar to god anywhere it is when you come to that spontaneous point that the mind of god can be revealed to you it is when you come to that spontaneous point of intimacy with the holy spirit that the data the counsel of the godhead can be made available to you if you get to that point you may not be a prophet but you will hear even much more than prophets around you if you get to that point you can be eating dinner and the moment you close your eyes to say the grace you are caught up in a vision to heaven and you witness something that happens and you come back and that's the point that we need to get to that's why we had this series the holy spirit and i that's the point of intimacy god wants to get you to to a point where you are totally susceptible to the will of god you are you are bothered about what is in the heart of god not your pleasure not your enjoyment so that at that point convenience no longer becomes a criteria for your work with god you are ready to go all out with god whether it is convenient or not one preacher said if it is all night it is all right just give me god that's what the preacher said he said if it is all night it's all right just give me God. In other words, if we come for evening service and the service turns into a mid, a, an all night service, he says, it's all right as far as there's God there. Not the ones that begin to look at their phone, look at their mailbox. I have, I have a presentation tomorrow. Who gave you the job? And I'm not in any way saying that you shouldn't care about, I'm just saying that we need to prioritize if we must be a generation that seek him the bible says this is the generation of them that seek him that seek your face read it in new king james he said this is jacob jacob there was a metaphor this is jacob the generation of them i think that's psalms 24 verse 4 verse 3 or verse 4 this is jacob the generation of them the generation was not Jacob. It was only using Jacob as a metaphor. That just the way Jacob was desperate enough to seek God and to know his mind consigning him such that he sent his, fa his entire family and all his possessions away. The Bible says he took them across the river and he went back and he was alone. Why? Because he needed to know the mind of God. What if something had happened to his family there? What if they were raided by bandits? As far as Jacob is concerned, it is either God or nothing else. And if you don't get to that point, you will walk through life always confused. You will always need prophets to prophesy. And because the devil knows that you need prophets to prophesy to you to know the mind of God, he will manipulate voice. He can manipulate situations because we are living in a generation that is crazy about hearing but not crazy about hearing from god we are crazy about hearing so if anybody comes to you with a vision you just you are interested to hear but you are not interested to hear from the very source The Bible says, whether there be prophecies, it will fail. Right? All of these things are pathways by which we can hear from Him. But the greatest and the most trusted way is when you are able to commune with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, let him that hath an ear hear what the Spirit saith. Not what a prophet said. Not what a pastor said what the spirit says hallelujah i don't know if that's a sermon but i think i'm done talking for the night at this point we can close and go home is that okay i'll look for time somewhere next month
to do this particular teaching. But I just felt to charge us with that. Pay the price to know God. Pay the price to seek after God. Don't get frustrated when you pray for one week and God doesn't seem to be talking to you. Don't get frustrated after one month of your spiritual journey. Some of us have been in this thing for years. There have been moments where you pray, you wait upon God for months and you don't hear anything. But you shall, you keep you waiting. Because at the end of the day, it's not even about what you will hear. It's about Him. Pay that price. God does not have grandchildren. God has all as children. Whether you are a businessman, whether you are a military man, whether you are a pastor, whether you are anything, pay the price to know God. Pay the price to hear the voice of your father. Pay the price to understand how he communicates with you. Pay the price to know him. And I tell you, when we talk about this price, it's not really fasting or prayer at the, at the end of the day. Those things can be routes. But I'm talking about the price of yieldedness, the price of consecration, the price of giving yourself to a cause. Let me tell you something. If I stop preaching today, I will still pursue God. For me, it's fun to know God. Knowing God is fun. I'm telling you, there's absolutely nothing. If you ask me what is my hobby, that's my hobby. And let's see how God will use us to bring revival to this generation. Revival is very simple. When ordinary men yield themselves to an extraordinary God. When natural men allow a supernatural God to walk through them. That's revival. Every other thing that follows is a product of that experience. That means before revival can break out, certain people must pay the price in the secret certain people must stay with God certain people must remain with God even when human beings call it delay certain people must embrace the cross of loneliness because for God to talk to you sometimes you have to be lonely you have to be alone almost always God will not talk until you are alone with him you see those dreams you are having those visions it's, it's, it's just a bait he's calling you the speakings of God cannot end in just dreams and visions. No. There is a place you get to like Job where he said, where the counsel of God was upon my tabernacle. There is a place where you get to, whether you are asleep or awake, he's talking to you. And you know his voice. There's such a place. There's such a place where you, you a time where you can move through life with confidence. And you are almost always accurate with your results. Why? because you know the voice of the one inside of you there's a place like that if he decides to speak through visions and dreams fine but brother i know a place beyond that for he leads me and guides me to the place of destiny he leads me and guides me to a place of destiny he leads me and guides me to the place of destiny he leads me and guides me to the path of purpose to the place of destiny let me tell you let me tell you something <laughs> most of the things that God tells me most of the things that God has spoken to me both for my life and for people around that has come to pass God did not have to move in a spectacular way all he had to do was to localize his voice in my spirit and my job was to pay the price to hear his voice distinct the Bible says there are many voices in this world and none is without distinction many voices who speak so the fact that you had a voice does not mean that voice was the holy ghost it takes staying with god and sitting on the word to know which voice is the voice of the spirit many of the things that god told me were things that he whispered in my heart 
things that you would have relegated but when the reality outplayed I knew it was God because God doesn't have to be spectacular to be supernatural yeah it doesn't have to be many of you are here as I'm talking many of you are here and the voice of God has been crying out inside of you for a long time but the ability to pay attention to that which is within the faith to listen to the voice that is within is what we need to trust God for and tonight I pray that God will open our senses I pray that God will open our eyes my desire my desire has always been that the people of God will walk with God will hear his voice and will come to know him that's my desire if there is a way that people can be educated to understand and to experience intimacy with God that's my dream that's my goal I believe in miracles that's why we have miracle service but the greatest miracle is that your soul is transformed is that your soul is renewed and a time comes where your soul becomes one with the happenings of the spirit of God that is inside of you how many of you believe we can get there I know this gospel is not for everybody it's okay I know I understand <laughs> But when these things begin to happen to you, I tell you, you walk through life without confusion. The Bible says, when they say there is a casting down, you will say that there is a lifting. You know why you will say that? Because you are saying that which he has said inside of you. Mm. For his delight is the word, is the law of the Lord. And in it, he doth meditate day and night. You are no longer moved by what happens outside you. Rather, you are moved by what happens inside of you. And when that happens to you, no matter the challenges that the enemy throws at you, you will never quit. No matter the failures you experience, you will never give up. For the path of the just is like a shining light that shines brighter and brighter to a perfect day. Lord, we want to know you. We want to know you. We want to know you. It's our desire. Is the more I want to know Jesus more of you I'm going to give us an opportunity to pray but before we pray let me share something with us and then we'll pray amen this afternoon I just sat down to pray just to spend time with the Lord and somewhere in the prayer I can't tell whether it was my physical ear or it was from within but I had an explosion I had an explosion like the sound of a bomb so when I came I think I asked uh, where's bro Paris I think I asked you right I asked you I said did you hear any explosion today was there any explosion today any sound like that no not really when I had asked you, sir, actually God had told me what, what it was I heard. But when I asked you, I was still in doubt. It was when you confirmed to me that there was nothing like that, that the Holy Spirit told me that what happened was that he made me to hear the sound of an explosion that will happen soon. So that we can pray against it. In other words, what he did was he took me to travel into the future and to hear that. I'm telling you that there is a place where you can so localize the atmosphere of the presence of God that you can step into the future and know things before they happen. You can go behind into time and see the, the source point of certain problems. So I came to declare it to you. I want us to pray. 
against explosion. What did I say? Uh huh. I don't know whether it's bomb blast. I don't know, but I just said pray, especially around this our area. Amen. Let's pray that it doesn't happen, and let's pray that even if it will happen, the danger should be minimized. This was how I told you a few months ago that the Holy Spirit showed me assassinations and deaths around military corridors and political offices. How many of you remember when I said that in January? And now in just less than a moon, two presidents have died in this, in this continent. Is that true? Now I'm telling you this not just so that you say, oh, he hears from God. No, I'm just telling you that it's the same way if you spend time in the secret. There are things you don't ask God for. I have too much problem to ask God about that. But there are things he will just be quick to you. There are certain informations that will come to you as a reward to the price you pay staying with God. So I, I'm telling us so that we can pray. I heard the sound of an explosion. And I want us to pray so that it doesn't happen around here. And even if it happens, it should be minimized. Amen. I want you to pray while you are seated and tell the Lord, Lord, help me, help me, help me, help me. Take me to another level in my pursuit with you. Another place in my work with you. If there is something you can put in me that will make me not satisfied, make me never satisfied, that will make me go all out for you, that will make me hunger for you, enough of the distractions around me, enough of listening to the voices around me, it's time to begin to listen to your voice. And to localize your voice as the atmosphere around my life. Regardless of age. Regardless of reputation. But Lord help me. Put something inside of me. Hmm. Only you can satisfy my heart. Satisfy my heart. Only you can satisfy me. Only you can satisfy my soul. Are you praying? Because the days ahead, hmm, I'm telling you, the days ahead, you will need to hear God for yourself so that you are not confused. When four people come to you as a lady and they all tell you God spoke to them that you are their wife, that's when you will know that the price of hearing God was important when it becomes a matter of destiny when it becomes a matter of purpose don't wait till those situations come don't wait till the wilderness seasons will come know him now thank God for prophets but I don't think that God, Jesus died just for prophets to, to lead his people no there will be no reason why he released the spirit from heaven to tabernacle in flesh if he yet will lead his people through a secondary means. Don't let anybody deceive you that you can't know him. God is our father. He has no grandchildren. He designed that every one of us will seek him. The Bible says in Acts 17 verse 27 that with the hope that we will find him for in him we live, we move and we have, have our being. Don't wait till the seasons where you need to make drastic decisions. Because when those seasons come, you will be under pressure. Hearing from God will become difficult. That's why before he took them to Canaan, he took them to the wilderness. He separated them for himself first. So that he can introduce his laws to them. So that they can know him through the language of his laws. Because they were about to step into a land where people were laden with all kinds of things. They were about to step into a place where there were many gods. So they needed to know Jehovah as their God. Lord, do something to me. Do, do something to my life that will make me a God chaser. Don't let anybody deceive you that you are not a man of God. Why are you pursuing God like you? Like this. 
The Bible says, even the youth shall be weary and the young men shall utterly fail. Utterly fail. If all you know is what everybody around you knows, a time may come where you can fail just like they fail. Pray, lift your voice and pray. Talk to him. Lord, open my spirit. Open my ears. Open my eyes. Kill any desire in me that is higher than my desire for you. Some of you, as you are praying this prayer, a surgery is happening to you spiritually. I'm telling you, some of you will live here this night and lose appetite for food. Some of you will lose appetite for your phone. Some of you will find that the days ahead, you just want to stay indoors with him. Some of you will begin to be, be you will begin to tread on higher places, deeper places of prayer, waiting upon God even when there seems to be nothing or no reason. Lord, grant me grace. Hmm. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith would be built stronger in the presence of. That's one of the things that he does to you. He begins to teach you. He begins to build your faith. That's the reason why he, he exposes you to certain experiences. That's the reason why he pushes you into places that you don't know. He exposes you to, to areas that your faith is not used to. Because he wants to build a man or a woman that can trust him. He wants to build a man or a woman that can hear his voice. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you will fall. call me. So take me deeper. Don't spare me. Don't spare me. Take me deeper. The dealings may be hard. It may be painful at some point. But don't listen to my cry to stop. Take me to deeper places. It's not about my comfort or my convenience. It's about destiny. It's about your purpose. It's about the mark of the price of the high calling that is in you. So take me deeper than Lord, hear our cry. Open us to new dimensions in our walk with you. Open us to new paths. New paths that we will use to explore the all sufficiencies of your omnipotence, of your omnipresence. Let us never get tired of knowing you. No, no, no. Because in knowing you, we are known. Put an 
appetite in us that constrains us to seek you at all times and at all costs even for the most trivial matters even for the most trivial issues may we not be in a haste to run may we be patient enough to wait hallelujah can we rise on our feet while all eyes are closed and there is no movement anywhere I have to do this before we close I believe that there are people who came here tonight probably you were invited or maybe you knew of the meeting and you came while all eyes are closed and there is no movement I believe there are people who have come into this place and for some reason everything that has happened here today seems strange to you you may have enjoyed it but something inside of you does not relate with what has happened here that is the reason the reason for that is because you are not born again the reason for that is because you do not carry the life of God inside of you the reason for that is because your spirit has not been recreated being born again is an experience it's not just a cliche being born again is when the life of God is imparted inside of a man being born again is when you receive your true identity as one that is from the Christ and I want to give this opportunity very quickly if you are here and you need to make a decision for Jesus you want to receive the life of God you want to surrender to him it doesn't matter who is looking at you right now all eyes are closed but you are saying it's true I need to surrender my heart to the Lord I need to allow this new birth experience to happen to me I need to become born again so that I can belong to the family of God you don't belong to the family of God because you are part of a church a local assembly you belong to the family of God because the Spirit of God is inside of you. If you are in this hall tonight, I want you to raise your right hand wherever you are so that I can pray with you. You need to say yes to Jesus or you need to be born again. Or perhaps you used to be, but certain things have happened and you have derailed. Certain things, mistakes that you made and now it looks like you no longer have a conscience. And you want to retrace your steps you want to make your ways right again you want to rededicate again wherever you are with all eyes closed raise your right hand let's do this and then we are done for tonight raise your right hand very well raise it very well it's a decision to be proud of raise it very well i'm coming back to the heart of worship where it's all about you truly it's all if you're raising your right hand raise it very well i'm sorry lord for the things for it's all about you it is all about you now if you raise your right hand walk to the front and meet me very quickly just walk to the front let me pray with you you want to say yes to Jesus you want to say yes or you want to rededicate your life you truly desire this life that you see in the people of God you truly want it to tabernacle in you you truly want it to find a dwelling place in you walk to the front wherever you are it's nothing to be ashamed of it's everything to be happy about It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. If you need to join them, please do that very quickly. Oh, it's all about you. 
Yes, Lord, it's all about you. Say it's all about you. All about you, Jesus. Yes. And those of you in front, I want you to repeat what I'm going to say. Repeat these words after me. And I want you to believe from your heart. Something is about to happen to you right now. As soon as you make this prayer, your current life ceases to exist. And the life of God comes anew in you. That's what it means to become born again. It's an experience that identifies you as a child of God. As a son and a daughter of the kingdom. Say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I acknowledge my sin. I acknowledge my fault. But I believe that you died and rose again for my justification. Father, cleanse me. Wash me with the blood of your son Jesus I declare that today I receive eternal life and I thank you for my sins are forgiven in Jesus name Father I pray for these ones and I decree and declare that their sins are forgiven I declare that right now by the power and the person of your spirit let them become born again let your life come into them i declare that they receive the gift of righteousness and the abundance of grace i declare them as new creatures in christ jesus and i decree and declare that from today they receive the victory over sin over satan and all through this life lord i seal them with your spirit and I declare that they are yours now and forever. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can we celebrate God for them? Now listen. All of you look at me. Look at me. You in front. Look at me. Listen. What happened here just now is that the you that walked out here is dead. Okay? The you that came out here is dead. And God is now alive in you by His Spirit. You are now new creatures. In other words, every sin that you have ever committed before you came here has been forgiven. And you have received the very life of God inside of you. You are now a bona fide son and daughter of the kingdom. You can boldly call God your father. It therefore means that you will not allow the devil use guilt or condemnation to keep you away from God again. Do we understand? And I thank God that this has happened. I will just lead you to our officers. They will talk to you, take your contact, and pray with you again. Is that okay? And I trust God that we will keep seeing you here again and again so that you can keep building yourself in the faith. In Jesus' name. Amen.